So you remember those good old days when you were sitting there in you know, year three or year four of school and you're just coloring in, you've got your crayons in both fists and you were just listening to the teacher tell you stories or whatever and you know around that certain time a lot of you guys will have learned about something called Bloom's Taxonomy which sounds like some kind of floral classification but actually it's a educational principle that talks about the different levels of mastery of knowledge and what mastery of knowledge really refers to is how well do you know your stuff so if you studied biology a low level of mastery of knowledge means that you know you're barely able to remember what you know the word cell means whereas if you've got a really high level of mastery then you are out there pushing the frontier of human knowledge by doing research and hypothesizing new uh, never heard of you know discoveries or theories about uh, biology in this case and so Bloom's taxonomy is this way that we can classify the different level of mastery you have over a piece of knowledge and obviously you want a higher level of mastery than a lower level you don't necessarily need to be the frontier of humankind when it comes to your you know final year high school chemistry exam but you do want to be at a level that is high enough that you are you know, able to hit all those curveball questions and score at the, at the top mark or whatever your goal is. So Bloom's Taxonomy is actually really, really relevant and a lot of people learn about this, but very, very few people, including teachers, know the full extent of how we should interpret this. And uh, I'll go into this very shortly, but I want you to remember that the reason I'm telling you this is not just for the theory but actually this is a practical guide in terms of how you should be structuring your studying and how you need to think about your studying and your studying systems to get the maximum amount of efficiency efficiency being studying as much as possible to the highest possible level of retention so you get the highest possible grade in the shortest period of time meaning more sleep more socializing more netflix more food and whatever other stuff that you want to do so this is Bloom's Taxonomy. Strictly speaking, this is the revised Bloom's Taxonomy. The original Bloom's Taxonomy is slightly different. And you can see it's composed of these six different levels. So we've got level one down here, level two, three, four, five, and level six at the very top. Let's start from the very bottom. The bottom two levels of Bloom's Taxonomy, so these are the people that have the lowest level of knowledge mastery. This is memorize and understand. Now, memorizing and understanding are what are considered lower levels of learning. And if you are learning to memorize something, then you know that that's not truly very well-known information. But most people would say that when you are learning to understand, that that's true learning. You know, you don't know something just because you memorize it. You know something when you understand it. It's something that, you know, a lot of people often heard. Maybe you've heard that yourself. This is not true though. Understanding is actually also very low level learning because just because you understand something doesn't mean that you're able to do anything with that information. And information that you know yet can do nothing with is not very useful. So what's the next step after this? Well, the step after we achieve understanding is applying that knowledge. So applying knowledge simply means using it to solve problems. And this is the first level at which the knowledge becomes useful. So before this, how do we know that you've got a low level of learning? Okay, level one memorization means that while you are studying, you're focused on having a definition and memorizing it. So people that are at a lower level, they often have lots of repetition. They are focused on rote learning uh, and the numerous problems of rote learning that we've talked about in other videos. Uh, and they're, they're spending a lot of time doing things just like flashcards. They've realized that most of their learning is purely just taking something and repeating it until they've just smashed it into their head. The way that I think about this is you've got that, you know, that baby game where you've got like the, the circular wooden block and then you've got like the triangle shaped hole and then you have to find the triangle block and you put it in the triangle hole and the circular block in the circle hole and the square in the square. But the way I think about this is Trying to be good at a topic by just memorizing it is like getting the circular shaped one, finding the triangle hole, and repeatedly smashing the circular, you know, wooden block into the triangle hole so many times that eventually the circle was like shaved away with like bits of wood chip all over the floor and on your face and in your eyeballs. 
and eventually it fits, but it's just a jangled mess and everything is destroyed and you hate your life and your hands are bleeding. So that's what learning through memorization is like. The next step is learning through understanding and the people that learn through understanding, their focus is on trying to understand the information. These people are having discussions uh, about it. They're able to explain the topic. They've got a good understanding of the topic or the, of the specific concept or the fact in themselves. They're not really focused on the memorization. They're focused on the understanding of the concept underneath it, which is obviously a big step up from just memorization, but it's still not very effective. If you've watched our video on memory hacking and how relational priority learning is more effective than information priority learning, you know that the human brain holds onto information and retains it at a much higher level and much more automatically when it has a lot of meaning for relationships connected to it. So information in isolation is forgotten. Information with lots of relationships is held onto. When you try to understand information, you are still seeing it in isolation. Yes, you understand that point of information very well at the time you study it. However, it's still not going to be retained a month or two or a year or two later down the line. Now you might be thinking, why would I even need it a year or two down the line if my exam is a week or two down the line? Well, the reason is because most topics tend to build on themselves. So the things that you learn next year are gonna assume that you already knew the stuff from this year. So if you forgot everything, then every year becomes disproportionately more difficult because you're never building on a foundation. So understanding is better than memorizing, but it's still falling short because it doesn't focus on relationships. Whereas applying is the beginning of what we can consider as higher order learning or higher level learning. And I'll use those two terms interchangeably throughout various different videos. When there is higher order learning or high level learning, we are focusing on the relationships. So it's very difficult to use information to solve a problem without relating it to other components that can help solve the problem or relating it to the problem and the nature of the problem, which tends to be multifaceted and more complex. So applying information, solving problems with it is a better step. And even better than that is the next step above it, which is analyze and evaluate. So analyze basically means that you are comparing uh, different ideas and different concepts with each other. We're saying we understand this and we understand this. What are the similarities and the differences? We're comparing and we're contrasting. We're trying to find different ways that we can group them together. And this is really looking at information in terms of the relationship and influence with each other. But we can take it an even step bef you know, beyond that to evaluate and evaluate is where we're not just comparing ideas, but we're actually assigning a priority or a weighting or critiquing it. So evaluating means critiquing, ranking, prioritizing. So we're saying this concept is important and this concept is important and they're related to each other. We've got that in the analyze step. Now we're saying this one is slightly more important than this one in these situations, and in other situations, it's the other way around. This one is more important than this one. And so we're not just relating different concepts to each other. We are relating different concepts to each other and creating a priority in terms of which concepts are the most important in different contexts. And this bridges the way for the final level, which is the highest level of learning, which I'll do in red again, which is create. This is creating conjecture. This is hypothesizing. This is creating new knowledge that doesn't exist. This is using what you know to theorize about possibilities. So people that are operating at the highest level within a field or an industry, they are creating new information from their deep, heavily connected understanding of all the concepts within that field. So we don't need to get to that level for your test or your exam. However, there is a very distinct and clear advantage of getting to the levels before that level three, four, and five, apply, analyze, and evaluate. And by doing that, you will find two things that stick out to you straight away. The first thing that you'll notice when you operate at this level is that you're able to do level one and level two faster and easier automatically. Okay, and this is because the brain enters a sort of autopilot. When you're trying to use information to solve a problem, or when you are trying to compare information with each other, 
you will naturally end up memorizing and understanding it more deeply. And actually, you will memorize and understand it more deeply than you would if you try to memorize or understand it. So you know that saying that goes, if you aim for the stars, you'll at least, what is it, well, aim, shoot for the moon and then you'll fall on the stars? Is that how the saying goes? Yeah, shoot for the moon and even if you miss, you'll, you'll fall among the stars or something, okay? Well, okay, personally, I never thought that that makes sense because the stars are like way further away than the moon. So I, like, you know, I don't know how that actually works. But anyway, the idea is that you aim high and even if you fail, you'll get pretty high still. The same kind of thing applies for learning is that when you aim for the higher level of learning, so when your focus is on applying, analyzing, and evaluating, then naturally, your brain will end up memorizing and understanding it on the way there, even without you intending to. In fact, I even challenge you, try to compare and prioritize information, deliberately trying not to memorize or understand it deeply. And you will find that is almost impossible. Only with the utmost attention will you be able to avoid memorizing and understanding the information. So even though we know we need to have memorized all the stuff for a test and exam, you don't need to spend that much time doing it because by aiming for higher order learning, it fills it in automatically. So look at your study techniques, look at how you write your notes, how you prepare for your test, how you prepare for your exam, how are you revising, and what level of learning are you at? What are you trying to do? Are you spending most of your time solving problems? Are you spending most of your time comparing different ideas to each other and doing mind maps or different types of complicated questions that bring multiple ideas together? Are you looking at webs of ideas and creating a strict set of priority and flow between how different concepts influence each other at different levels uh, and different degrees of importance? High level learners spend a lot of time on the later stuff. Low level learners spend a lot of time on the earlier stuff. And the insecurity is that if I don't spend time to memorize and understand it, I'm going to forget it. But actually, it's the other way around. You're more likely to forget it if you focus on the memorization because you're not building the relationships. And the relationships are the things that naturally make things more memorable, not the other way around. So, you know, all the techniques that we teach, the, the stuff that we teach in the course, the stuff that I teach in the other videos, these are all to do with increasing higher order learning, getting us away from the lower levels of learning that are very time consuming and not very effective, and changing the way that we study so that we are looking more at the apply, analyze, and evaluate stages. So really simple thing that you probably learned early on in your school years, but actually, there's a lot to learn, a lot to gain from this, and very practical things that you can do to change the way that you think and study and if you're needing more ideas or techniques in terms of how you can be more about applying analyzing evaluating then make sure to watch the other videos that we've got on our youtube facebook instagram or if you are just so inclined you can even buy the course as well but we are planning to have as much of this resource available for you as possible so that you can really equip yourself with these more efficient techniques because i think it's borderline unethical that they don't teach this stuff in school uh, as it is because it's just that effective now I will make a small side note, which is that the higher order learning is not something that you can do all the time necessarily. And there are certain things in academic curriculum that you do need to memorize at a lower level. And that's where things like flashcards and stuff come in. So I'm not saying there's no place for them, but there is an over-reliance. But generally speaking, for high school level, early high school, there's usually around a five to 10% of the material that you learn needs to be memorized or purely understood. Uh, later, senior high school level, it tends to be around 10 to 15%. Uh, early university level, it tends to be around 20%. Later university level actually dips down even lower because you have so much accumulation of knowledge that actually you need to memorize even less but you very rarely need to be memorizing more than 20 or 30% of your content. And if you're in high school, almost unheard of to have that much memorization um, as necessary. Most likely it means that you're not using a higher order of learning. And the final other point that I'll make is that the order does matter. You can't put all your ingredients in the oven, turn the oven on, take them out, and then mix them and expect that you made a cake. The order of events is actually really important. So even if you're solving problems, if you solve the problems later in your learning, that's actually very different to solving the problems early in your learning. So if you learn information first and you try to memorize and understand it to begin with, which we know that these are the lower levels of learning, right? 
If you try to do this first and then this, and then you do this, then that is much less effective than doing this first and then allowing your brain to fill in one and two along the way. And the reason is because your brain is focusing on whatever you're framing it to focus on. So if you're trying to learn in order to solve a problem, and that's your first priority, before you even know what it means, you're trying to use it to solve a problem, then everything you learn, everything you memorize, and everything you try to understand is framed in a way that is rel related to the problem. So it automatically creates a bunch of relationships, which is much faster than trying to learn it in isolation and then putting the pieces together because that's, that's a redundant step and, and can often take days or weeks or at least several hours to just clear through all of that mess. So that entire step is not actually necessary. It's better to just skip that step completely, disregard that, trust that your brain will be able to fill in the gaps on the way and if you do that, you will find you're able to study so much faster that you can then go back because you've got plenty of time left over to see if there's anything that you missed and you can memorize and understand all the rest. You can sweep up the little scraps, but you'll find that there's a lot more that you retain than you would normally expect. And of course, that's only level three, applying and solving problems. You can take that a step further. Don't just learn in order to solve a problem, learn in order to create priorities and relationships and compare and find similar similarities and differences. When you read a concept in a single paragraph, stop for a bit and think, how does it compare against all the other concepts that I've learned? Which ones are more important? How are they similar or how are they different? Put that in something like a mind map or some other type of note taking, and then you'll find that you actually end up retaining, memorizing and understanding it a lot better. And it goes down even further in that you're able to solve problems with that information much more easily as well. So kind of a complicated system, you know, maybe you'll need to change a lot about the way that you're studying, but just start slow, start from the basics, look at the way that you're studying now and think, how can I make a few very easy beginner changes to slowly get my learning to the next step where I'm not spending that time memorizing and understanding and I'm focusing a lot more on the apply, analyze and evaluate stages. And again, if you need more tips, check out our other videos we've got on our, on our course as well for those of you that are already working through our course. Hopefully you found that useful. If you agree, disagree, or have your own experience about this, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. It really helps with uh, getting our videos out there to more people with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and if you like the stuff that we're posting, make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed it, thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next one.